A portion of this video is sponsored by Motion VFX. Recently, I upgraded to the new 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro from my previous 15-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and I've been very happy with this move. Now, there's a lot of thought that went into my decision making, from choosing the screen size to the internal specifications down to the actual color itself. All of this I want to share with you in this video today. To start, let's compare the designs of the two computers. Now, starting with the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, you can see it has this thin, tapered design that we've come to see for many years now. And this definitely looks good, but in terms of cooling and as well as additional ports, the options are limited with such a thin design. On the other hand, looking at the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it takes a slightly different approach to the design. In a way, it takes one step back, but then also two steps forward by adding more functionality through having more ports and being a little bit thicker to allow for better cooling as well as better performance. Now, I've made several videos about my experience with the new M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, which I'll be sure to leave linked in the description. But in those videos, you've heard me mention before that I absolutely love this more modern, boxy and more squared off design that we get with these new MacBook Pros. I think it just looks really, really sharp. Additionally, as someone who makes videos every day, having the return of that SD card slot is simply a must have. Not to mention HDMI is great too, as well as of course, good old MagSafe. In my opinion, Apple should never have removed these ports from their pro line of machines. So I'm all the more happy to finally see them brought back. While we're on the subject of improving from the previous generation, let's talk about the keyboards. Now the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar featured Apple's butterfly keyboard. And this was a new thinner keyboard design that yes, allowed for the computer to be even thinner than before, but in reality also came with quite some issues. These keyboards were definitely unreliable. Uh, simple dust getting trapped inside the mechanism could cause keys to get sticky or to simply stop functioning. Now, eventually Apple did finally have a keyboard replacement program, which was free. So that's good on their part. But at the end of the day, this program shouldn't have had to exist to begin with. I, like many, had to get my keyboard replaced, I would say just about two years ago. Thankfully, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro went back to a good old reliable scissor switch mechanism and truly is better than ever. There is much more key travel, keys are stable, and of course, crucially, they are reliable. Overall, I would say these new keyboards provide a truly excellent typing experience. And then going back to the previous generation, this had the touch bar. Now, in theory, this was actually pretty cool. This was a thin multi-touch surface that would adapt depending on what app you were using. But in practice, much like the butterfly keyboard, this wasn't very reliable. It froze often, and because it uses a multi-touch display, means you can't reach or feel for familiar buttons like you would be able to do with normal function keys without having to take your eyes off the screen, in other words, off the task you are doing, to look down and access these functions. At the end of the day, I found myself barely using it. The M1 Pro MacBook Pro improved on this by simply removing it and going back to a standard row of physical hardware function keys that you can press to instantly change functions like your volume and brightness. Now, the best part of the touch bar they did keep, and this was not the touch bar itself, but rather the touch ID sensor that we find on the far right of the keyboard. And this allows you to still instantly and quickly log into your Mac. We also get this really nice new black inlay uh, that sits underneath the keyboard. And I think this looks especially great with the lighter silver model, creating that contrast. Just quickly going back to the idea of the touch bar, I do think that Apple was onto something, but I think the best design is really going to be a hybrid of the two. Imagine having physical keyboard keys, each with their own little individual display. That way you retain the tactile feedback of a normal keyboard key, and then still have the functionality and versatility of being able to change the function of those keys depending on what app you use by integrating little square LED displays. Anyway, we'll leave that for Apple to design. But let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on the touch bar? I'd love to hear from you down below. When it came to choosing the color, I switched back to silver after experiencing some fading of the space gray color by the palm rests after prolonged use. 
I suspect that if this were to happen to the silver model, this would show less because the silver color is much closer to the natural color of aluminum compared to the darker space gray. Now let's compare the displays. Now the new MacBook Pro comes both in a 14 inch as well as a 16 inch version. So my previous 15 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar kind of falls in between. Now previously I got the larger 15 inch model over what was then the smaller 13 inch model, not due to the larger screen, but rather the performance inside. And at its time, the MacBook Pro with touch bar, especially the mid range 15 inch version that I have here, absolutely delivered with very powerful performance for its time, but was always just a little bit big to carry with me and take on the go. So with the new M1 Pro chips, I figured this would be a good opportunity to step down to the smaller version and get the best of both, being both portable while still having the performance that I need. Comparing the two displays, yes, you do lose a little bit of screen space compared to the larger 15 inch model, but the difference between the 15 inch and the 14 inch is truly minimal. I can tell you that from using the 14 inch MacBook Pro, I do not miss the slightly larger display on that of the 15 inch model. Also having those thinner bezels going along the sides and top of the display somehow help make the display feel bigger too. Overall, I really think the 14 inch model strikes that perfect balance between usability as well as form factor. And then looking more closely at the corners of the display, you can see that we have these rounded corners. Now, at first I didn't think much of this, but in actuality, this made quite a big difference to the display. And personally, I quite like it. It's kind of like comparing the old iPhone 8 display, which had those sharper corners compared to that of the iPhone 10, which was the first iPhone to introduce those rounded corners going around the screen. Now in UI elements, we see rounded corners everywhere. So it only makes sense to bring this design feature to the physical display. These new MacBook Pros also feature Apple's Liquid Retina XDR ProMotion display. Now, what does this mean? I don't know either. No, but in all seriousness, these displays are truly fantastic, being brighter than ever, having better contrast ratio than ever, better colors, while still being incredibly accurate, making them perfect for video editing as well as photo editing. Now, the big headline feature of these new displays has to be that 120 hertz refresh rate, which is twice as fast as a typical 60 hertz refresh rate. Now, what does this mean? Well, in practice, what this means is all of your system animations, whether you are scrolling through text, uh, zooming in and out of photos or maps, everything is gonna be just about twice as smooth, which makes the computer simply feel faster and again, buttery smooth. Before I move on to comparing the performance between the two computers, regardless of which computer I use, I always carry over my essential Final Cut Pro plugins, most of which come from Motion VFX. This is M Callout Specs, a Final Cut Pro plugin from Motion VFX that is a must have if you make any product related content. These elements make your videos stand out, help engage your audience and display information. M Callout Specs contains a wide range of 50 customizable descriptive callouts. You will probably recognize many of these elements from my recent videos, including today's video. I find these callouts to help get information across in a visually engaging and easy to follow manner. M Callout Specs seamlessly integrates with Final Cut Pro, letting you simply click and drag to apply them and customize them further to match your style. To give an example, I'm going to add an element from the plugin. I will use the battery indicator and drag it over my clip as normal. Now what is cool is I can actually track the element to move with the clip. Using this box to select the area I want to track, then press track, and in seconds the element now moves with the clip. Finally, I will go into Inspector and customize the text. This only took seconds to apply, track, and customize. The M Callout Specs plugin lets you save time editing and spend more time creating content. To learn more, be sure to click the links in the description. Big thank you to Motion VFX. Now let's get back to the max. Okay, let's talk about performance. Now, first, I want to preface this by saying that the 15 inch MacBook Pro, particularly the mid range model that I have here, still performs very well in normal day to day tasks, even five years after its original release date. And this is a good thing, but also very important. These computers, after all, are not cheap, so it is important for big investments such as these to be able to last for years to come. Having said that, as someone who now creates YouTube videos full-time and edits every day, 
I knew that the new M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro would be the perfect opportunity for an upgrade. Apple Silicon has proven itself to vastly outperform the Intel chips that came before it, improving every aspect of the performance. Booting up the new M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro is faster than ever, and it wakes up from sleep faster than I can even open the computer screen. And the SSD inside is actually four times faster compared to that on my previous 15 inch MacBook Pro. For reference, the 15 inch MacBook Pro got around a read and write speed of one and a half gigabytes, whereas the 14 inch MacBook Pro has a read and write speed of both five and a half gigabytes. What this means is creating, uh, copying and transferring data within the computer is going to be nearly instant. And then as someone who edits videos every day, I am so glad to say that Final Cut Pro has simply never performed better. Of course, this is incredibly well optimized being an Apple application running on an Apple computer powered by Apple's own chips, and these results really show. Normally, I shoot, edit, and export in 4K, and for this workflow, this MacBook Pro has been absolutely perfect. I feel like I haven't been able to actually push it to its limits. It simply never lags even when scrolling through that 4K timeline with ease and having multiple elements applied to each clip. Overall, I would say that the Final Cut Pro experience is just about two to three times faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro compared to the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now, if I think about how many hours I spend per day, per week, per month editing video or simply waiting for things to render or export, this computer already has saved me a lot of time. So if you are a creative professional and especially if you use Apple's own apps, these new MacBook Pros are going to be a massive jump up. All of this increase in performance is especially impressive, also considering that the 14 inch model is of course smaller than the previous 15 inch model, and actually also costs $600 less, and that is without even taking into account inflation. Not to mention that the 14 inch MacBook Pro stays whisper quiet, and I've barely heard the fans ramp up, something I can't say for the previous MacBook Pros. Now let's talk about battery life. Now, of course, with any pro level machine, the battery life is really going to vary depending on what you do with it. So starting with editing in Final Cut Pro, I found myself getting just about two hours of use out of the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now, since I did have the keyboard replaced, uh, they do replace the battery with that. So my battery actually has relatively few cycles, making that two hour estimate to be quite accurate. On the other hand, the 14 inch MacBook Pro doubles it with just about four hours of battery life editing in 4K in Final Cut Pro. And then during normal mixed day-to-day -day use, uh, watching YouTube videos, scripting, researching, uh, replying to emails, I would say the 14 inch MacBook Pro gets just about nine to 10 hours of use on a single charge. Again, just about twice as good as the four to five hours of mixed use I get on my 15 inch MacBook Pro. And all of these numbers reflect both displays running at max brightness as I always do. I've used MacBook Pros for many years, going all the way back to the 2009 unibody MacBook Pros. And what I can say is that these new M1 Pro MacBook Pros take everything I love about the MacBook Pro and combined it into a modern and powerful design. I think for many, including myself, the new M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro really is the one to get and is a fantastic upgrade to the previous 15 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. If you haven't seen it yet, I've also done a full review of my 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, as well as a unboxing video, both of which I will leave linked on screen right now. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.